Hi guys, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today you voted on your next tutorial and we are going to do this wonderful little amigurami turtle. It's so easy and I'm going to show you how to do every little bit of it. Um, I have been doing some beginner videos. This is not necessarily beginner, but I just have a feeling that anyone can do anything they put their mind to. So if you are a beginner, um, you could still give it a shot. So, um, and this could be your first, if you haven't yet, this could be your first go at amigurami, okay? So these are the materials you're gonna need today. You're gonna need a five millimeter hook or a size H. You're going to need a darning needle. You're going to need stuffing. And I've put this in some of my other videos where I'm making amigurami and I'm just gonna repeat it if you've heard it before. If you do not have, if you can't afford to or you don't want to go buy any stuffing, please repurpose things in your home. You can take old pillows, I mean, that aren't feather. Um, you can take old stuffed animals um, and you can open them up and use the stuffing from there, okay? So you don't have to buy stuffing, but you do need it. And then if I didn't say it yet, you need a pair of scissors, okay? So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna start on the head first, okay? So so there's a couple, I'm gonna show you the couple parts to this body first. So this is one that I've completed. I'm gonna show you how to do, uh, put it together when we get done. Um, but this is the head and this one is a little bit bigger. That's because I used a larger yarn here. This yarn is cotton yarn from Walmart. Um, I never can remember the names. Someone will post it though. Um, but anyways, and this is a yarn from Hobby Lobby, just a variegated yarn, green yarn there. But as you can see, this one is a little bit bigger and it's because it's a heavier yarn. Um, so anyways, this is the head. This is the body and the legs that attach to this piece right here. So this will be a piece, then we're gonna make this piece, then we'll make the legs, and then we will make the shell, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get started. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need. I may not go through every little thing, but I am definitely gonna show you how to put this together at the end because I think that's really important, okay? So I've got two colors here. You can use any colors that you want, but I do have a cream and then I've got this uh, um, color changing yarn here, okay? So. What you're going to do to begin is you're going to, um, you can either do a magic circle or you can do a chain two, okay? So either one you wanna do, um, I'm gonna do a chain two for this video because it'll make it easier. So I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then I'm going to put six single crochets in this first chain from the hook. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, then I'm going to pull that. We will be working in the round, which means we will not close off with a slip stitch. We will just simply keep going around, okay? And you will find that a lot in uh, most amigurami's. Okay, so this is called working in the round. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go into my first space here, the first um, single crochet that I did, and I know that by counting back, one, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I know that's the one I need to go into. I don't need to go into this little funky space right here. So I'm gonna go right into there, and you may need to take turn it and take the edge of your hook like that to get it in there okay but you're going to put two single crochets here one and two and you're going to put two in the next and you're going to do that all the way around you're going to put two single crochets in each around for a count of 12. so there's four five and six, seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 and 12. 
Okay. Just like that. You can pull that again if you want to. Okay, so now that we did our two in each around, I'm going to use a um, marker here and I'm gonna put it right here so I know where I begin and end here, okay? Just like that. So I'm gonna put that right there. And then what I'm gonna do all the way around is the one and twos. So if you've watched my videos before, you know what that means, but I'll tell you, I'll show you real quick. So you go into your next space and you do one single crochet. Then you go into your next and put two single crochets. And you repeat that sequence all the way around. So my next one single crochet, and then my next two single crochets. And my next one single crochet, and in my next two single crochets. And you should have a stitch count of 18 at the end of this round. So one and two. And you should end on two, the increase. So you're gonna take out your stitch marker and then you're gonna put two single crochets right there. Just like that, okay? Then you're gonna put your stitch marker back. And now you're going to do, that's my cat snoring, sorry. Then you're going to do two into a round, which means that you're gonna go into your next space and put one single crochet into the next one single crochet and into the next two single crochets. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around. So one, one, and two. And at the end of this row, you should have 24. One, one, and two. One, one, and two. I'm so sorry, my washing machine is going right in the next room. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but that is what that is. So we've just got washing machines and cats snoring. <laughs> so is life. Okay, now we're coming up to the end. So we do one and one, and then we take out our stitch marker and then we do two. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do for our increases to make the head. Okay, so you've increased up to one and two, okay? If you wanted to make this turtle bigger, this is where you would keep going. So we ended on two and um, the two and two, okay? So we should have a stitch count of 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, okay? So you should have 24. Now, if you wanna make this bigger, you would simply do three and two, four and two, five and two, okay? So that's how you would make this turtle way bigger if you wanted to. You could make it ginormous. You could turn it into a pillow just by increasing that much, okay? So now what I want you to do <clears throat> is I want you to do Let's see here, I just kind of made this up as I went. So let me look at this one. So there are six, 12, one and two, two and two, and then one, two, three, four. So you're going to do four rounds of one single crochet around, okay? So you're gonna do four rounds of that. I'm gonna do one with you, okay? I'm just gonna do one, because that would take way too long, because we gotta do the other stuff too. 
So <clears throat> you're just going to do one single crochet around. And I'll just do that with you on camera. And when you start to do these one single crochets around, you're going to notice your um, head starting to turn in. Um, you should notice almost immediately if you are using a thicker um, cotton yarn you may not notice it quite as much at first and that's okay but with this you know red heart mainstays any kind of yarn like that it should start turning pretty quickly and um, that is how we're going to make this circle for the head is by doing these rounds we'll bring that up into a circle okay so going to do this one round with you, show you how it looks. Pull that out, put your last single crochet there, and put it right back in again. And that way you'll never lose count of where you need to go. Now, I this part needs to be on the outside, so at this point you need to go ahead and turn this this way so that you'll be crocheting up with this out, okay? <clears throat> now, if you wanna go ahead and pause the video and do the other three rounds, you can. So if you wanna go ahead and do that, go ahead and do that and do three more rows of single crochet. That'll make a total of four. Okay, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to decrease. So when you come back, you should have four rows of single crochet. And so now you need to start decreasing, okay? So what you would do is you would go um, start with what we ended on, which was two and two, okay? So you're gonna go right into your next stitch and you're going to put one single crochet, go into the next, put one single crochet, and then you're gonna put an invisible decrease. So to do that, you're gonna go through the front loops only. So you're just gonna go right through the front loop of this Go over and go right through the front loop of that. Pull this through and then do a single crochet like that. And that pulls those together, okay? Then you're gonna go on and you're going to do two more single crochets, one and two. And then again, you're going to go right into here to your next stitch only through the front loop and go through your next stitch only through the front loop pull your yarn through and then go through both loops. And that's an invisible decrease. Then you're gonna go to your next and do one single crochet, and to your next, one single crochet, and then another decrease. Okay, and just keep doing that all the way around. Totally messed that up. Sorry about that. Just doing the decrease here. Okay, and then for our last two, there should be two left, including where your stitch marker is, we're going to put a decrease. So I'm going to go through both. and then go through just like that. And if you can tell, it's really cool. You really cannot see the decreases in there when you do it that way, okay? So now what I want you to do is I want you to continue decreasing. So you did the two single crochets and a decrease. So the next round should be one single crochet and a decrease. Then your next round should be decreases all the way around, and then you will close it off, okay? And then it should look like this. Okay, so 
Now we're going to move on to the base of the body. I'm sorry, I'm undoing my yarn because I'm just going to undo it and start again. And I'm just rolling it back up, guys. Sorry. Sorry, I'm off camera. I'm getting all caught up in my camera. I'm just going to cut it off. Okay. So you have your head done, and now we're going to work on this base right here, okay? So I'm just gonna start it off for you. I'm gonna show you what to do. So you're going to start off the same way that you did the head. You're going to single crochet, I mean chain two. Then you're going to work six single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay? Then you're going to pull this to you. And you're gonna go right into this first space, which is kind of hard to get into here. So I like to, sometimes I may even have to pull that up and just take my hook and loosen it up through there. Because it is hard to get into. Okay. So you're going to go right in there and you're going to put two single crochets because we're working in the round. So just like you started the head. So two all the way around to make a total of 12. So there's two and then there's three and four right there. And then five and six. You can pull this if you need to. Seven and eight. Nine and ten. And eleven and twelve. Okay? So now I'm going to pull my stitch marker back out and I'm going to put my stitch marker back in. And now I'm going to do one and two all the way around. So one and two. One and two. So I'm putting one single crochet and then two single crochets and each stitch around for a total of 18. Okay. So I'm just getting started here because I want you to know what this is going to look like. So basically all you're doing for this one is you're making a flat piece, okay? So one and two, so there's one and then we pull out our stitch marker and we put two. Okay, so now what you're gonna do to make this right here, okay, is we're gonna keep increasing till three and two. So we did our six, then we did two in each for 12, then we did one and two for 18, then you're going to do two and two for 24, and then you're going to do three and two for 30, okay? So you should end with a stitch count of 30 for the base of this turtle, okay? So you're just gonna keep increasing, and then when you get done, you're just going to pull off your yarn, set it in, and then you're gonna be all done for the base, okay? So that's all that that entails. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the feet. And again, it's very similar to all that we've already been doing. You're going to chain two, 
then you're going to put six single crochets in the first chain from the hook. Okay. Then you're going to go into this first stitch, working in the round, and you're going to put two in each all the way around for a count of 12. So there's two, three, four, five, and six seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 and 12. Okay, and then you can pull that in the back to pull that together. And then you need to put in your stitch marker. And we're gonna do just like we've been doing, we're increasing, okay? So now we're going to put, we're going to do the one and twos. So you're gonna go into your next stitch and put one single crochet. Into the next, put two. Into the next, one single crochet. Into the next, two. And do that all the way around. And what you're wanting to do is just increase until you get the size that you want for your legs for your turtle, okay? You could stop here if you wanted with the one and two, or you could go further. But you really do need, if you want the size that I have right here for it to poke out quite a bit after you put the turtle shell on, you probably need to do at least one more round. So we're gonna do that together and then I'll show you how you um, half them, how you turn it into a leg, basically, okay? So now we're going to do two and two, so we're gonna go into our next stitch, put one single crochet, into the next, put one single crochet, and into the next, put two single crochets, okay? Go into the next, put one single crochet, into the next one single crochet, and into the next two single crochets. And just do that all the way around. And you should have a stitch count of 24. Okay. It's starting to turn a tiny bit, that's okay. Yours may be flatter, or even more turny, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're putting in our last two, okay? So then what you would do is, is you would cut off your yarn leaving a pretty good piece because you're going to want some to work to put your legs on, okay? Now to end these, what I like to do is I would go right into the next stitch, and you can do this for the base of your turtle as well, do a slip stitch, and then chain to pull up your yarn. And I just do that so it looks more even, okay? So now what I would do to turn this into a leg, I would fold this piece right in here in the middle, and this is great about amar amargarami, you can do this. I don't even need to work that in because I'm gonna sew this together. So I'm gonna make sure that all that's in there. 
I'm gonna make this where this piece is at the end and I'm gonna fold it in half. Then I'm going to take my darning needle Okay, and then I'm going to sew each, go through each stitch and pull them together. So I'm just going through the both sides of this V and both sides of that V, okay? And then I'm gonna do that all the way down. I think I missed, but that's okay. But try to get through both sides if you can. Just make it look more even. That one went all the way down to the bottom. So you're just sewing along here. Okay, and that is how you make the foot, just like that. And so then I would take this piece and I would work it into the center of this so it won't ever come undone. So there's one two and three or you could have left that piece hanging okay which is really what you should have done I wasn't thinking um, because I always work in everything but really leave that piece hanging instead of working it in over here off the bottom and try to keep it pretty long <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry um, try to keep it pretty long so that you can work these in okay at the end but this is what you do you make four of these like I just showed you and then you, you sew them together on the sides and then you place them, okay? When you're looking at the bottom of this um, uh, flat piece that you make that I told you how to make where you go, um, you go up to uh, three and two, okay? You're increasing to three and two. So you'll have three single crochets and then an increase of two all the way around. When you finish that, you'll notice that it almost has an octagon shape to it. So what I do is I take those points, okay, of the octagon. So if you were looking at it, it would look like this. Let me just turn it around. So you see, it kind of goes like that. So um, I put these legs right on the space where these little points are. And I imagine that this is the head, this is the tail, and these are where the feet go. So that's how I do it. Um, you can use stick pins if you need to, but I make sure that both are facing this way. So the flat end is here, the flat end is here, the curved ends here, um, and actually this is not correct. <laughs> this should actually be flipped around, but as you can see, it still looks pretty good. It doesn't matter, but this should actually be flipped that way so that they match, okay? And then you sew these onto this end, okay? So now we have the legs, we have the face, and we have the head. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the turtle shell. I think it's great if you use a variegated yarn or a color changing yarn that does it on its own, it makes it easier. Um, but you can use solid colors if you want. So I'm gonna use this color right here to show you how to make the shell. And again, the shell is just like everything else that we've been doing. We're gonna start off with a chain two one and two. Then you're going to put six single crochets in the first chain from the hook. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to tighten that. You're going to go into your first, working in the round, you're going to go into your first single crochet here that you did. And you're going to put two single crochets. If I can get my hook through there, my goodness. There's one. And then two. And then three. And four. Five. And six. Seven and eight, nine and ten, and eleven and 
12. And then you would put your stitch marker in. Which way did it go? There it is. Just using the same stitch marker here. And then you would do your increase of one and two, like we've been doing. Then you're gonna do an increase of two and two. And then you're gonna do an increase of three and two. And there's really no point in going through all of this because I've already showed you how to do this. Um, but so basically you're just gonna keep increasing until you get to three and two, okay? So let's look at the one that we have here, okay? So here I have six, then I have 12, then I have one and two, then I have two and two, then I have three and two, okay? And right after that is when I start doing my rounds of single crochet. So after you finish that round of your three and two, you're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven rounds of single crochets, okay? And once you finish that, that is going to be your turtle shell, okay? So just increase to three and two and then do seven rounds of single crochet. Now, if this is too fast for you or if you need more explanation, please don't hesitate to comment or ask me anything that you need, okay? But just like I just showed you here, you're just gonna keep increasing all the way around to three and two and then do seven rounds of one single crochet around, okay? And then it should be around this size, depending on what size weight yarn you're using, okay? But if it's like this, it'll be very similar. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it all together, okay? So once you get done with all your pieces and your legs, you're gonna put these on like I told you how to do. Then you've got your head and you've got your turtle shell. <clears throat> so what we're going to do next is we're going to put on the turtle shell. So I'm going to show you how to sew this on, okay? Now, this is one that I had done previously, and I had um, taken it apart so that I could show you. So this really should be in the middle here. So put all your little um, pieces and scragglies inside the middle. You don't have to work them in because we're just going to put it right on top just like this, okay? Okay. Then we're going to take our darning needle. And since I don't have a piece from this, you would normally use the piece off of this. So when you get done increasing and doing your rows, once you get done with your turtle shawl, you're gonna leave a very long piece of this to use to sew in. But since I don't have it, I'm gonna show you how to do it in case you cut it off or you work it in, which you need to know how to do it anyway. Okay, so in case you didn't do that, you didn't leave enough, and you need to know how, this is a great way to show, and this is also gonna let me show you how to put the turtle shell onto the turtle, okay? So if this happens to you and you don't have that, that string or you don't have enough to go around, you're gonna take a piece of yarn, put it through your darning needle. At the very end, you're going to make a slip knot, okay? Just like that. Then you're going to take this, and you're gonna crochet all around, but before we um, start doing that, I wanna tell you, you need to leave a space open so that we can put our stuffing, okay? So just think about that as you're going around, but I'm gonna start right here on a corner, okay? And I'm gonna be going through both, um, both sides of the V, okay? So I'm just gonna to try to line it up as best I can, and you can flatten this if you need to. And I'm gonna go through both sides. Now, if you left a long string, you're gonna start wherever that string is, but it's not gonna matter. This is the same to put it together. But if you didn't and you need to do it this way, you're gonna pull that through just like I just did. You're gonna leave that hanging and we'll work that in later, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> now that I've got it worked in, is I'm gonna go through like this. I'm gonna go through this side, and then I'm gonna go through this side, holding my needle. So I'm going up and down, okay? Just like this, all the way around. It's going up and down. And when you get to your feet, 
you're going to go right through the middle of your feet. So I'm going to go, I'm going to um, put my needle right through here and then I'm going to go right through, um, right through my leg and I'm going to go right out the other side. And then I'm going to go right through here, go right through the leg and pull it up right through that side. Okay. And go right through the leg and out the other side. And if you see, doing it this way leaves less of um, any of your yarn poking through. You still will see a little bit, but it won't be bad, okay? So we're just gonna keep doing this all the way around because I do wanna show you how to stuff it. So you just keep trying to go up and down. And guys, this makes a great project. I'm gonna yak my mouth while we're going through this because I just showed you how to do it, so now you know how. But um, this makes a great project for craft fairs. I have one coming up and I'm making a bunch of these. They're really easy, simple, and fun to do. And um, from what I understand, they do sell really well. I haven't done them yet, so I don't know. Um, but either way, they're fun to do. And if you don't sell them, they make great gifts. Okay, and I've just pulled in my other leg by accident, so I can just undo that, and that happens sometimes. So I'm just going, trying to line these up. I think because I'm working in a small space, I keep catching that and hitting my camera. <laughs> oh, let me move it that way. Goodness, I'm catching every leg. Oh, and I did that wrong too. I did it the uh, the whip stitch way. You can do it that way, but um, it doesn't look as good. So let me just put this back on my darning needle again. I'm really used to doing that whip stitch when I'm putting stuff together. So. But yeah, so I went through there, so I'm gonna go through. So you're really going in and out instead of doing the whip stitch. I need to remember that as I go. Okay, and then I have this little scraggler. Sorry, I was off camera. A little scraggler there. I'm just gonna go through and try to catch it. Okay, so now if you can see, I've got this space right here that I could stuff, but I think I can do a couple more before I start stuffing. So I'm just gonna do a couple more of these in and outs here. And just try to line it up the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I think that's pretty good. We left a space about that big. So we're gonna leave this right here on our hook. And then we're gonna take our stuffing. And if it's something from a pillow or something, you need to make sure that you tear it up really good. If it's something you just bought from the store, you can just take it out of the bag. But if it comes from an old pillow or an old stuffed animal, you need to make sure that you um, tear it apart really well, okay? Because you need it to be um, fluffy, okay? So I'm just gonna push that into the turtle shell there little space that we have <clears throat> and this is one I had already stuffed so I kind of have what I need here I know exactly what I need to do this you don't really want to overstuff this turtle but you don't want to understuff it so it's kind of one of those things where you just kind of need to fill it out yourself um, you want it to be pronounced but you don't want it to be like crazy sticking up so you know if it kind of looks like this that's pretty perfect okay so I've, I'm gonna continue, now that I've stuffed it, I'm gonna continue sewing on camera, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm just going in and out. 
And I think it does look better to use the color from the shell for this, for the top of the shell, because as you can see, you can see a little bit of white sometimes poking through. Um, so it does look better to do that, um, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. Still looks really cool. So I'm nearing here the end, so I'm just gonna keep doing this right here. And then for this last one, I'm just gonna go through there again and just kind of pull it, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna work in your piece that you ended with, because you're all done sewing now, so you need to work this in. So I'm literally just gonna go through like the body here, just like this. So I'm gonna go through, there's once. I'm gonna go through right through the same spot though. When you're doing amargurami, you have to go through the same spot you came out in, okay? So there's two, and then I'm gonna go right back in that same spot, and there's three. Okay, then you pull tight so no one can see that that's there. It's going to go back in and then it goes right back into the body. Okay, and then I would do the same for this piece. I would just sew it into the body three times and then you're done. And then look at that. You have your turtle head there. Okay, so if you turn that over, I'm going to see that these are my legs here. This is where I would put my head, either here or here. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna choose this side right here, and I'm gonna put my head right there. So what I'm gonna do is, is, where is my head? Here it is. And normally you would have a long piece coming out of here, and that is what you would use to sew that on, but um, I don't um, have that. So I'm gonna do the same thing I showed you before, um, except we're not gonna do a slip knot now. I'm gonna put my yarn on my darning needle, and, um, I'm gonna work it through the head. So if you ever lose anything, this is how you do it. I'll work it through the head, or I get right where I wanna sew it, okay? And then I'm gonna place it right here. And the way these line up, if you want them to look correctly, because I did one and it ended up wrong one time, is you want the head to rest in between the bottom and the top of the shell. So you don't want it down here, like down here at the bottom like this, then it's not gonna look right. You want it to be right there to where the end of your head meets the shell, okay? And then you would just go around and you would go in and out, sewing this head on and you can go any which way you want. You're probably gonna need to squish it and this is really hard to do on camera, guys. <laughs> but basically, you're just gonna go round and round until you get that head situated exactly the way you want it to, okay? So then I would probably do a couple more over here because it was hanging a little bit low. So I would probably go in like right there and I'd pull pretty tight, okay? So you see, it starts to kind of look the way you want it to. And then you would work this piece in through the body, going through the space you went into a couple times to finish it off, and that way it'll never come undone, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to do the eyes real quick. I did not bring my black in, so I'm just gonna use this brown color that I have in front of me. We're gonna use that. And then we'll be all done. Um, to do this, a lot of times eyes are hard. They can make your whole project look funky if you don't do them right. And if you've done amigurami before, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? I'm just, <laughs> this is gonna look kind of wacky because it's a variegated piece of yarn, um, but you would really need like a black or a dark, dark brown. Um, for this one, I used a very dark brown and I think it turned out good, um, but either way. So um, I don't have any stick pin, I have one stick pin with me on my little thing, but the best thing to do for this is to, um, Find where you wanna put your eyes and then put a stick pin in there, okay? So like, let's say I wanted one eye here and then I would put a stick pin over here, exactly where I wanted the other one. And then I would take my yarn and I would go in way down here at the bottom, okay? Cause I wanna work in my yarn. So I'm gonna go right in, I'm gonna pull it where it's all the way in and then I'm gonna go back through here again and I'm just trying to work my way up to where my eye is gonna be. But I don't wanna pull too hard because if I do, it'll pull it out, okay? So I know I want my eye right here, okay? Cause it's right where my thing is. So I'm gonna put this here 
and go down just like this. Okay, so there's one. Two, three, and then you can just keep going to make this eye as big as you want to. However many times you go around is how big this eye is going to be. But I want to make sure that I close the gap so that there's no white showing through. You see that white right there? So now I can pull this out, okay, and I'm just going to keep going there, okay. So that's probably about the size that I would want. I wouldn't want pink necessarily, but that's the size I'd want. And then on the other side, I would have another one of these stick pins. But since I don't, I'm just going to try to eyeball it. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm right about there, I, th I think. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do to get to the other side is I'm going to go right back in where I just came out. And then I'm going to go right over here. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So however many times I did over there, I'm going to do over here. One, two, I'm going to take this out. Three, and I think I did four, didn't I? So there's four, okay? And so then your eyes will be there and hopefully they won't be two different colors. <laughs> and then what you would do to make sure that this stays in is you'd go right back into that same place you went out of and you'd work this bit into the head. So there's one going right back into the same place, two, and then three. And some people don't do that many times for amigurami, but I just wanna make sure my stuff doesn't come undone. Pull very tight so it goes back into the body. And then there you go. And that would need a couple more turns with um, the thing, but that is how it would look. Work in all your little pieces, like I showed you how, and it just turns into just a lovely little turtle, okay? So I hope this was helpful, guys. I did try to do a little bit quick with the increasing and decreasing because I know that um, my followers, they know how to do that. Um, but if you, like I said, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask me. Please don't hesitate to send me pictures. I love to see your pictures. If you send me a picture on Facebook, I will definitely put it on my wall there on my business page so that everyone can see what a great job you did. So I love that. Please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Happy crocheting, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.